Hey everyone, it's Dwayne from the Cinefilm Crew, and it's been a couple of weeks, and I've even decided, or debated, putting this video up, because it's been a couple weeks, I figure the relevancy is kind of dipped down a little bit, but I am still seeing videos being posted about the Texas Frightmare Weekend, and I had a chance to go down there, it was a really fun time, so I just wanted to take a second to uh, share some of my pictures, a uh, little bit of video. I didn't take too much video, but pictures, video, and some stories I had from the Texas Frightmare Weekend. And, you know, like I said, I had a fun time. I kind of, I'm going next year. I'm definitely going, but I think I might go on a Sunday. It'll be less packed, or hopefully it'll be less packed. Because it was literally just shoulder to shoulder people down there. And I have a terrible, <laughs> I have a, a very terrible uh, like social anxiety thing about big crowds. I cannot stand big crowds. I freak out. Any little thing is amplified. Like somebody cuts me off. I'm like, oh, son of a bitch to cut me off. These motherfuckers. But I didn't have that down there. It was, It's. I don't know if it's just because I know it's people with a similar thing compared to like going to the grocery store. I don't know. It was, it was just a way better experience. But... Enough of my ramblings, let's get on to the Texas Frightmare Weekend. I had a fantastic time. Uh, I took some cool pictures. For instance, like the very first one I took was Freddy Krueger. Uh, there was a guy on stilts. And something that was kind of weird that my wife pointed at, actually pointed out. Uh, this lady right here, I don't know if she thought I was taking a picture of her or what the deal was, but... She handed me the, the camera back with a zoomed in photo of her. I'm like, I don't remember taking that. So then I zoom. I'm like, oh, it zoomed in. So I zoomed out. And I'm like, oh, shit. That, that's just kind of weird. Alien and Ripley, they were pretty cool. This guy, I don't know what he was supposed to be, but it was just really awesome looking. Very cool. Uh, then I took a, pictures of props and stuff like. This one from Aliens, The Joker, uh, Blade, It, and everybody asks, and I, I see it. I definitely see it. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but that looks like Robin Williams in a bunny suit, and it's weird. Then there's the shrunken head from Beetlejuice, Little Shops of Horror, or at least I'm assuming it's Little Shops of Horror. That's what it looks like. A uh, couple pictures of Jason. Well, Jason and Leatherface, and then Jason, he was a big fella. Not, I mean, both in height and girth, he was, a, he was a fella. He was a big dude. But he pulled it off. It was pretty cool looking. I like it. A lot of effort went into that, and it, it shows. Uh, I was tinkering around with my camera. I have a, it's an older camera. I bought it on Facebook, like, about a few weeks before the event because I didn't want to rely just on my cell phone in case the battery went dead. I brought a battery pack, but you never know. And I was looking at pictures and I took one far away and then I zoomed in on it. And even if even now, if I zoom in even more, like if you pinch and zoom, because I transferred them all to my, my phone, you could, like the zoom on the camera is pretty damn good. It is a Kodak Z712. It's only a 7.1 megapixel. But outside, it takes really good pictures. Inside with a low light, not so great. But I was looking at my, my pictures, and I heard somebody on my right giggling. I'm like, what the hell? Okay, didn't think too much of it. And I heard him continue giggling. I'm like, okay, what? And then about that time, I saw somebody... Or something in front of me move, like from my peripheral, my 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 riffs. I had my riffs going, and this guy was just kind of sitting there, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm sorry, buddy. Didn't even realize you were there, and I I took a picture of him. Really cool. He shows up in a lot. Of, like, I've been looking at videos and stuff just to kind of see what everybody else's experiences have been, and and things that I might have missed, because like I said, it was just so packed, and. He shows up in, a, in quite a few of them, too. Very cool dude. I can't remember. The Spirit of Halloween. I can't remember what the character's name was, but from Trick or Treat. That was pretty neat looking. 
Michael Myers. He shows up in a lot of them also. This was a neat table. I don't remember when I saw it, but I just, it caught my eye, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty neat. I took a quick video of it. I thought I took more more pictures than this, but apparently I didn't. I have an autographed Blu-ray copy of Circus of the Dead, which we're going to review uh, sometime on this channel. The people that were at the booth were really nice. Uh, a woman actually approached me and was like, you know, tell me a little bit about the movie and whatnot. I'm like, I'll, I'll check it out here in a little bit because it was still early in the day. And I went around to some other booths because I wanted to make sure I got everything else that I wanted to do done first before coming back. I came back and bought a Blu-ray copy. They were very nice. They signed it. Uh, there was two people there, a, a, a bigger fella and a skinnier fella. And both very nice people signed it. I also have a poster signed by them also. At the end of the day, we went to a secret screening. And it was for a movie, I believe, called 47 or 47 Hours or something like that. It wasn't a bad movie. I mean, it wasn't great or anything like that, but it wasn't terrible. And on the side of the wall, they had this. It was pretty neat. It was a, a light of the logo for Texas Frightmare Weekend. Yeah, it was pretty neat. And I'm in line going into the, the secret screening. And I hate it when people do this, which you're going to get it anywhere. It's not just specifically down there or whatnot. Uh, somebody cuts in front of you. Like, oh, I need to go over there real quick. And I don't care if there is a line of hundreds of people packing into the uh, the secret screening room. I have to go over there. Because I actually, I mean, this is all the people that... I was in the far back. And this is the front view of it. I also have a video of it. Of like a panning... And there was a lot of people in there. But somebody cut in front of me, and the guy behind me is like, Come on, man, they're trying to cut in front of you. So, like, I, was, I wasn't panicking, but I was just kind of like, in my, my, my deepest radio voice I could muster, I was like, Excuse me, please. And they hurried up and moved a little bit further over, because <laughs> it was packed, dude. Uh, I got a few things signed. Actually, uh... The very first thing I got signed was Creepshow, the special collector's edition by Tom Savini. Uh, I, he didn't talk as much as I was thinking that he might, but it was still pretty cool. He, I don't know if he just got off of lunch or what, but he it took him a little bit to get back, so I imagine it was probably lunch. He came back. There was like four people in front of me. Not very long. Not a very long line. And I handed him the Blu-ray. And he signed it, and I was like, hey, can I snap a, a selfie with you real quick? He's like, yeah, that's fine. And he, he took the selfie, and uh, I shook his hand, and I'm like, hey, man, I really love your work. And I was hoping to kind of engage in a, a little bit of a conversation with him. Because he's been doing a lot of stuff here recently. Like, he did uh, Corey Taylor's new mask. And for those of you who follow wrestling, I don't. I know D&J and Rosencrantz do. Uh, Bray Wyatt, I believe. He just did, like, a mask for somebody in the WWE. I think it was Bray Wyatt. But it was it was really cool meeting him. And he was just like, thanks, and sat back down. So I don't know if he was tired. I mean, I know after I eat lunch or something, I get a little sleepy too. So I can't really fault him for not wanting to engage. And it may have just been overwhelming. A lot of people all there, whatnot. Uh, something else I got signed. Oh, no, I want to talk about uh, the Blu-ray for Creep Show. has a neat little story to it too. It was a couple of weeks before the event, and I've been trying to find Creepshow 1 or 2 on VHS, because for some reason, I collect VHS tapes, horror movies specifically, but also ones that I've, I grew up with. I put an ad on Facebook, hey, in search of Creepshow VHSs. Facebook, for some whatever, I don't know if Mark Zuckerberg doesn't like horror movies, or, I mean, I know directly it's not him that's doing it, it's like an algorithm and shit, but... It got taken down for TOS. I'm like, fucking really? It got taken down for TOS? Well, it was a couple of weeks before the event. Or it might have been the weekend before. On a Friday or a Thursday. I'm like, I'm going to pop down to FYE and grab what I thought was a double pack. It was actually just the collector's edition of Creepshow. And I went in. Could not find it. I don't know if you can hear that or not. It's thundering its ass off right now. 
but I asked them if they had Creep Show on Blu-ray. And they're like, uh, I don't know if we do or not. And we started talking a little bit. Could not find it. They looked it up online. Or on their website. And they're like, we can order it for you, but it won't be in by the time that you're you're needing it. And I'm like, ah, shit. So I started talking a little bit more about how there was a copy of Creep Show there not too long ago. And the lady was like, you know, actually, I think I just sold that today. And I'm like, ah, oh, son of a bitch, really? That sucks. I can't remember if it was that day or the next. DNJ texted me and said, hey, I got something important to, to show you or tell you. Come over uh, whenever you can. I'm like, okay. And I popped over. And he's like, yeah, I got you something to be able to take down there. I'm like, okay. Because I had to pick up uh, a couple of things for uh, that he wanted signed. And I had to pick those up, so I already had them. So I wouldn't have to go over to his place at like 5 o'clock in the morning and shit. But he hand, he's like, yeah, I just got this for you today. And he put, I had a hunch. I'm like, I wonder. And sure enough, he pulled out the fucking Creep Show Special Edition on Blu-ray. I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I just picked it up today. And I'm like, I literally just popped in after work to see if they had that. And they said they had sold it that day. He's like, yep, that was me. <laughs> so it was, it was a neat little thing. Like, coincidental, happenstance kind of. It was fun. I did not get to meet Bruce Campbell or Robert Englund. The lines for them were ridiculously long. I'm talk- I would have stood in line for a couple of hours at least. And I didn't get down there until almost noon. And there was some other things I wanted to watch and check out. There was just so much stuff to pack into one day. That's one reason why I want to go on a Sunday next year. Hopefully less line or yeah, shorter lines. And I don't know. Just hopefully to pack more stuff in. But there was a huge line for Robert England and Bruce Campbell. And I walked by the Bruce Campbell line. And I'm like, well... If nothing else, I'll just take a quick picture. And I turn on my camera, and I bring it up, and out of the corner of my eye to my right, at the Lee Majors booth, I see somebody shaking their head. And I'm like, what? And I, I look over to get a better better glance, and I call them handlers. I don't know what their official term is, but I'm guessing it was the handler for Lee Majors, the person that takes the money and all that stuff, shaking his head no. So I point at my camera and go, no picture, and shake my head no, or not shake my head no, I, uh, I do like the wave your hand in front of your, your neck, like, no, no. And he shook his head, no, no picture. I'm like, oh, that fucking sucks. So I turned to my left, because I was going to go check out some more booths. And sure enough, there's like two other people snapping a shit ton of pictures of Bruce Campbell with our cell phone. I just wanted to turn around and be like, really, dude? These guys are doing, I can't. Which I know there's nothing really they can do about it, I believe. But it's one of those things where it's like, you're going to tell me no, but yet these two are just snapping away. D&J had me bring down uh, two things. It was a NECA of Eric Freeman from Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. Old uh, Ricky. And a copy, a Blu-ray copy of Sleepaway Camp. To have signed by Felicia Rose, who was uh, Angela in Sleepaway Camp. I believe I did the the NECA figure first, I think. And that dude, he was cool. Don't get me wrong, he was very nice, very, very talkative, uh, very cool. But man, he was a little weird. And this is coming from me. This I'm a weird dude myself. He was a little weird, like. He asked who it was to. I'm like, oh, it's John. He started writing to John. Well, he put two. And he's like, how do you spell that? And like, uh, J O N. And he's like, hmm, okay. He's like, what's your name? I'm like, well, it's Dwayne. And he's like, D W. I said, no, D U A N E. And he was like, he's. I'm not kidding. He sat there for like th- what seemed like a minute. It was probably 15 to 30 seconds, just going, hmm. Oh, no. That's a weird. Hmm. Like. The spelling of my name somehow, like, was baffling. I don't know. But it was, it was a really nice guy. Uh, pretty cool meet, meeting him. Uh, the second, per, well, the third, technically. 
the next person I got was Felicia Rose. And by far, I mean, granted, I didn't go meet uh, Bruce Campbell, Robert Anglin. I didn't meet a whole bunch of people down there. But hers was by far the best. Like, she was very interactive, uh, very upbeat, just all around awesome, I guess. <laughs> like, when I very first got in line, uh, the lines, like, snaked around a bit. They had, like, little, uh, like the things that you see at movie theaters with the big nylon straps that guide you where to go. I was standing in front of a pillar, like a, a load-bearing pillar inside of the room, and I didn't want to stand directly in front of it because there were so many people there, I didn't want to be in the way. I'm like, I'll leave that spot open until the people in front of me move up some where I can move around it. Then I'll, I'll move up. There was a guy that came up, a very heavy set guy, very tall. He's probably he's about four inches taller than I am. I'm like five seven, so he was probably like pushing damn near six foot. Very heavy guy. He came up. He was like, "Is this the line for Felicia Rose?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, this is it." And he continued to stand directly in front of me. And I'm like, "Hey, the line's actually like behind me. I don't know if anyone's behind me or not, but it's it's back here." And he turns around and goes, "Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut in front of you." And then just continues to stand there. Like, are you serious? <laughs> and he's he was one of those guys that were like, very, I don't know exactly how to say it, like, uh, talked about nothing, I guess. Very talkative. and Like, he was yelling at, I guess, some of his friends and stuff. He's like, hey, I, I don't remember the names. Hey, hey Tara, Tara, uh, uh, hey, when when does Robert Englund start? Uh, okay, okay, when is this panel? Okay, uh, Thomas, Tom, uh, just, and just on and on. I'm like, oh, man. Of all the people to cut in front of me, I had to get the really annoying guy. And then he tries to make general conversation with me. He turns around and, oh, man, I really like your tattoo. That's, that's pretty cool. I'm like, yeah, person who cut in front of me. I mean, I didn't say that. I wanted to so bad, but I'm like, I'm... I try not to be non. I try to be non-confrontational, but I'm like, yeah, thanks. Awkward silence. <laughs> uh, there were some women in front of him who were dressed like Freddy Krueger, lady, uh, Freddy Kruegers, and he was trying to chat up with them. Oh man, I really like your old costume. Did you did you guys make that yourself? And just on and on and on. And I'm like, uh, way to be a fucking chode, dude. And he kept turning around. He'd move almost kind of out of line, but not. And, like, uh, it was annoying. Finally, when we got closer, uh, Felicia Rose had to leave. I think she went to the bathroom. And it was closer toward her time that she was going to be hosting a panel. And she goes, oh, you know what? I, I hate to leave you guys, but I have to go real quick. I'll be right back. And, of course, you get people in line speculating what's going on. Oh, she isn't going to be back until after a panel. That's going to be like another hour or so. And, of course, line cutter in front of me heard that. And he's like, oh, I can't stand here that long. That's going to be a really long time. So he leaves. And I'm like, fucking great. Because he was getting annoying. But Felicia Rose came back in probably like 15 minutes or so. And I'm like, oh, cool. She that dude's gone, she's back, I don't have to like, worry about coming back later, or cutting line, and then, even bigger line later on, and, the closer we got, uh, it was really close to her panel time, I think it was like, down to, like, 10 minutes or so, and there was, she goes, how many people can we fit in, and it was like six, I was number four, so, I was really glad about that, but to give you like, an idea of, of how cool Felicia Rose was, uh, like she was very upbeat, taking pictures, like just having a great time. And you could tell that, you know, she was just, she was owning it, dude. She was awesome. The two women in front of me, uh, actually got like a signed picture and I guess they had left it there. And I, I was getting ready to come up there to get it signed, get the, uh, D and J's Blu-ray signed. And she's like, wait, we have to find, I can't, can't remember their names. Uh, Angie and Tamara, let's just call them that. She's like, "Where, where's Angie and Tamara at? They forgot their picture. And she was like legit concerned that they had just completely forgotten their picture. 
And I thought that was really nice. It wasn't just like, oh, well, that sucks. I mean, she was legit concerned, and that was pretty cool. They actually came back like 10 seconds later after she had realized that the thing, that their uh, picture was there. So it all worked out. <laughs> it was a happy ending. D&J specifically asked me to have Felicia Rose sign the Blu-ray a specific way. And she loved it. She was like talking. She's like, oh, this is, this is probably one of the funniest ones I've done all day. And the way that he had me sign it, as you can see in the picture, was my dick is bigger than yours. And then heart Felicia Rose. And she was just the coolest dude. Like, I could probably go on for about another five to ten minutes about how awesome she was. I mean, the entire time in line, you could see her taking pictures. I did not get a selfie with her uh, because I was not limited on cash. But I wanted to save it for certain things, two of which I did not get to go do because the lines were ridiculously long. But uh, I kind of regret not getting a picture with her because they would take a shit ton of pictures. There was like four pictures per pose, and she did two poses. So there was like eight pictures that they would take just to make sure that they got a really good one out of out of the set. The first one was like your arm around her and like snap, 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 snap. And then she would do the pose that she did from Sleepaway Camp with the face kind of turned to the side, eyes looking, mouth agape, and snap, 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 snap. And, like, even after that, you know, she'd hug you. I got a hug from her. She was pretty cool. And everybody came up to her, you know, pictures, hug, handshakes. And you could tell that she was just having a fucking ball with it. And it, some of her energy was contagious. But she was, she was very awesome. Yeah, the very last thing I did was go to the secret screening of 47 or 47 hours. I don't remember what the movie was called exactly, but I remember it was like something about 47. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. It was one of those things where it's like, oh, okay. You could tell that it was like a, I'm not going to say a super low budget because I don't I have no idea what the budget is. Because uh, there were special effects in it and stuff. And people were laughing at weird, inappropriate times. Like, some of the things that you would think would be, like, oh, that's a light chuckle. And somebody, you'd hear him in the back, ha, 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 ha. Like, really? It wasn't that funny, fucker. I had to dip out of the screening. Uh, I think it was around 7.30 or so. I'm like, well, I better get back. My plane leaves at uh, 8.25, or so the ticket said. So I dipped out. And made it back, I don't remember what time. But they almost started boarding immediately. It was like 7.55. I'm like, shit, we still have a half an hour. And they started boarding early, which I'm glad I left when I did. And I made it back to St. Louis and took this picture because it was pretty. And that was pretty much my trip. You know, it was a really fun time. Uh, I can't wait to go again next year. Like I said, I might go on a Sunday or hell, I may even just rent a hotel, because it's right at the Hyatt Hotel, so it's not like you have to go real, real far to go to the convention, especially from the airport, it's like right across from the airport, so next year I may actually just rent a hotel room, stay down there for a couple days, definitely going on a Sunday, so it's either going to be Saturday, Sunday, or just Sunday, and yeah, I'm definitely going to go again next year, I had a great time, uh, Despite the line cutter, you're gonna get that anywhere though. It's you know minor inconvenience. I'm just kind of making it up more than what it is, I guess. It's like I'm focusing on just that one thing, but yeah, it was packed. A lot of really cool stuff down there. A lot of really nice people too. And all around, it was just a really great fun time. Who knows? Maybe even next year, I might print out a couple of uh, like cardboard things for this channel specifically and leave them down there. I don't know. There was somebody, actually, oddly enough, uh, somebody did that with the Horror Cast, or what is that? Uh, no, Cult of Horror Podcast. And I've been checking them out. I really like them. They're pretty cool. Uh, I think it's on Google Play. I have a QR code. I don't know if I can, if I can find it. I will try to put it up. That's initially how I found it. I did the QR code. Oh, there it is right there, actually. Yeah. Uh, Cult of Horror. 
They are a podcast that discusses various aspects of horror genre, including news, reviews, culture, and more. And that's got their QR code. And it's got their QR code. Uh, I love their little quotes on the back. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, there was a lot of these little card pamphlet things down there. Um, like just random movies. One of them was like, oh, fuck, what was that one? That one's Circus of the Dead. Dick Shark. Yeah, Dick Shark. Uh, oh, also Clownado. Clownado was down there. I did not get a chance to go down that way to check that one out because I would have liked to have gotten a poster. But, man, it is so easy to get turned around in that place. Like, all those people, all the booths, booths, booths. It is really easy to get turned around. I had to constantly use the uh, uh, schedule thing. It's like a paper that they give you to show you where all the booths, where everything is. I had to constantly use that damn thing just to see where it is. But the back of theirs, their little pamphlet thing is awesome. It's a... Quotes and stuff from people. What are the critics saying about us? Uh, it's kind of hard to see. My room's kind of dark. I like it, but you c- but you swore. Elliot's mom. Hey, this ain't bad. R slash podcast user. Uh, shit, hang on. Because it's like white and black font. I'll put a picture of it up to show you kind of how hard it is to read. Uh, it can only get better. Eli Roth, and then in parentheses, probably. So <laughs> that's kind of neat. I, I like that they put a little bit of uh, time and effort into it. And like I said, I've been listening to it. They're they're pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's that's honestly about it. I had a great time. We'll be back next year. Just don't know the days. And if you get a chance, check them out. They're really fun. Well, this is Dwayne from the Cinefilm crew. Uh, our next movie should be. Well, I have to talk to D&J because it's either going to be Otis or, depending on the time, it might actually be Brightburn. So, hope to see you guys next time and have a good evening or whatever the hell my my sign-out is going to be. So, bye-bye. Hey.